Hello, teachers, parents, and educational leaders, and welcome to this episode of Breaking Down the Best. Now, during this episode, you will get a peek into the members-only area where I have tons of resources to help you make math fun, make it click, and make it stick. There should be a link somewhere around this video where you can learn more. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's get to it and let's break down the standard. Welcome to Breaking Down the Best, a video series dedicated to breaking down Florida's best standards for math. So grab something to write with and maybe even a snack. This looks good. And don't forget to put a smile on your face. There you go, I see you. And let's dive into today's best standard. Hello, hello everyone and welcome. My name is Sarah McCarthy, the creator of McCarthy Math Academy. I'm super pumped that you are here today so we can break down the standard together. Today's standard is ma.5.nso.1.3. MA stands for math or mathematics. Five stands for fifth grade. NSO is number sense and operations. The first one means that we're working with place value and then we're in the third standard for that. Oh my goodness. There are so many notes that I've taken here. I'm just looking at it like, Bleh, so sorry if this overwhelms you, but we will break it down. Let's do it. By the way, this resource right here that I have marked up all over, this is not something that I have created. The Florida Department of Education puts this together and makes it available to the public. These are the resources that I use to study the standards and really dissect them in order to create what you see in the taking on the best. So let's break down this one. It says compose, which means to put together and decompose, which means to break down multi-digit numbers with decimals to the thousandths. So we're going all the way to the thousandths place, thousandths place in multiple ways. This is a very flexible standard in that way. Using values of the digits in each place, we will demonstrate the compositions, which means how we put them together, and the decompositions, how we break them apart, using objects, drawings, expressions, and equations. So the example here says that the number 20 and 107 thousandths can be expressed as two tenths plus one tenth plus seven thousandths. So you can see it's kind of like expanded form. In fact, a decomposition, I would say, is a form of expanded form. This is just called a numeral word form because we've got a number, the numeral, and a word. It could also be decomposed as 21s plus 107 thousandths. So one of the things that I made note of and I constantly have in my brain is that in third grade, the third grade standard requires them to also regroup with decomposition. And I put a question mark there because in fourth grade and in fifth grade, I have not seen examples or evidence that you'll have to regroup as well. And you might be saying, Sarah, what do you even mean by this regrouping? So if, with this example that they gave us, 20 and 107, thousandths, we could say that this could be 21s plus, and we could say instead regroup this over and make it 10 hundredths plus seven ones. Third grade has to regroup. Why? Because it's explaining, it's helping them to understand what's happening when we're adding and subtracting with regrouping. But I'm just not seeing evidence of the regrouping with decomposition in fifth grade. I guess the, what I'm trying to say is just be on the lookout. Um, if you happen to see any evidence, I would love to see if you have any resources that you're using where you're like, oh no, fifth grade does indeed regroup. Let me know because I'm I'm a nerd like that and I would love to see. This is a also a great standard for number talks because there are so many different ways that we can decompose numbers, which you could throw in that regrouping if you wanted to. Just like in the last standard that I filmed, the NSO.1.2 for fifth grade, these are the horizontal alignments, the other standards that will benefit from the standard in fifth grade. 
I've noticed that these same standards are presented over and over again, so I'm just going to list them out for you and tell you which one each one is. But what you can do is if you want to learn more, find the standard with that video where we break that particular video down. So NSO 2.4 is exploring multiplication and division of decimal numbers. 2.5 is multiplying and dividing by one tenth and one hundredth. All of these standards right here have to do with the order of operations. So 2.1 is numerical expressions into math descriptions, which helps with order of operations. 2.2 is where we're solving using order of operations. And 2.3 is true false equations and also implementing order of operations there. M.2.1 is the multi-step problems with money. And here they did not provide any terms, but I said, you know what? I think expressions are important to know because an expression is where there is no equal sign. For instance, right up here where they decompose the number, that is an expression. We have values and we have a symbol, a number, we have a plus sign, an operation going on there, but there is no equal sign, that's an expression. As soon as you see an equal sign, it goes from an expression to an equation. Basically the related horizontal alignment is showing you, hey, this standard is important because knowledge of this standard is going to apply to a bunch more standards in fifth grade. But what I like to know is where are they coming from? What knowledge should they be coming up with and where are they going next year in sixth grade? So in fourth grade, we've got MA.4. FR.2.1, which is decomposing fractions, it's breaking down fractions, the sum of fractions. And I was like, really? That's the standard that you're going to list there? Because I can think of a couple other standards, so I actually listed them. The MA.4.NSO.1.2 and the same standard, but in third grade, both have to do with composing and decomposing numbers. So with taking on the best, if you know that your students might struggle with the fifth grade level of this, you can go down to the fourth grade level and kind of prime their knowledge and then move them up into fifth grade if you want to. You can even go down to the third grade level if you want. I think third grade is a little bit more complex because they have explicitly said to regroup in that standard. So. All right, anyway, so where are they going in sixth grade? They're going to 6.NSO.3.2, which is where they will rewrite the sum of two composite whole numbers having a common factor. That sounds really fancy, doesn't it? If we scroll down to the purpose and instructional strategies section, there were a couple things that stood out to me. Here it says that flexible representation of multi-digit numbers with decimals also reinforces the understanding of how the value of digits change if they move one or more places left or right. That standard really comes into play throughout the whole year, especially with decimals. And just so you know, all that I read right there was from the previous, one of the previous standards, we're on 1.3, right? So the very first standard in fifth grade is what they're talking about there, but it does apply to the standard too. There is that alignment there. Um, that we can use base 10 blocks flexibly to help. So I know a lot of resources will say, okay, now this flat has become one hole. So there's one hole, two holes, and then we have there, that would be a 10th. But I think what that is saying using base 10 blocks flexibly is that if you needed to go to the thousands to model, you could say that a cube it's a very disjointed cube, but the cube, the thousands cube, could then be represented as the one whole. And then for the tenths place, we could use a flat because 10 of those will make up one whole. One 10 rod could become the hundredth, and then we've got a thousand there. So you could do it like that. Most times when you see it depicted, it is, is like this where the whole is the flat but that you can use them flexibly because that's just showing the power of 10. Each time that we move, we're getting 10 times greater. So you get to call it however you want to call it, using it flexibly. And the misconceptions, misconceptions it says, students may assume that the value of base 10 blocks are fixed based on their previous experience with whole numbers. Again, they might think that units have to be ones, and that's not true. 
rods have to be tens, flats have to be hundreds. They are what you call them as long as whatever you call one, the other one makes sense. Whatever you call a one, the next one down needs to be the tenth, the next one down needs to be the hundredth, the next one down needs to be the thousandth, and so on. And a lot of times here, what I'm seeing in instructional tasks is that they'll tell you what each one needs to represent. So using base 10 blocks, here's an example of an instructional task, um, show one and 36 hundredths two different ways, allowing one flat to represent one whole. So calling one flat one whole, how would you model the rest of them, right? Okay. And then here is a way of how these numbers could be decomposed. Of course, you'd have to go work through each one of them to select the ones that equal 14 and 9 hundredths, which we go over problems like that in taking on the best. So let's go over to the membership area so you can see what you have access to, okay? So here we are on the website. You can go to members, enter here, or up at the tab, either one. Click on taking on the best, which grade? fifth grade, which strand, NSO, and we're on composing and decomposing numbers with decibels, so fun. So for the bronze resources, that's where you have your video lessons and your printable student guides that go with the lessons. We have a video on decomposing numbers with decimals and composing numbers with decimals. In my opinion, decomposing numbers is a little bit more challenging than composing numbers. Um, okay, so here's an example of the printable guide that they would see. It says decompose each number two different ways and model each with the place value block. So we will take the number in standard form, decompose it two different ways, and model it with a drawing. When we get to this one, number two, when we get to one and 34 hundredths, I just want to give you a heads up that number two is going to take a little bit. <laughs> Why? Because we're breaking them down into hundredths. They have to draw 134 hundredths in this one. Okay, and then we have composing numbers with decimals. So you can see here we have the values two tens plus 14 hundredths plus nine thousandths and etc. We've got four examples there of numbers that have been decomposed and we are putting them back together. We are composing them. That's what that video lesson is all about. If you are not sure how to even do that. If you are new to this skill and you're like, how do I even go about teaching that? You can absolutely preview the lessons. They're there for you as well to learn from, to make you feel confident as you walk in and start thinking about how your students might think about this lesson, right? All right, so that's those are your lessons there. Then we have the silver plan. So you can always go back to your bronze resources, of course. With the silver plan, you have access to your printables, the answer key to those printables, and the math misconception mystery video lesson on this skill. Let's click on the printables. What I've done is taken everything, the video lessons, the extra practice, the math missions, and the math misconception mystery documents that you need, and compiled it into one download. So you can just print this out and make your copies. So you can tell this is a video lesson because of that icon. And then after the video lesson, they have extra practice where they can practice independently without a video lesson. There's two extra practice videos for decomposing numbers. Then we've got our video lesson for composing and another extra practice that looks like the video lesson another extra practice for composing numbers with decimals, and then your math mission. Once the students have learned the skills that they need to know, we've kind of deconstructed the skills they need for the standard, the math mission does a wonderful job of putting it all back together and letting your students experience everything. Um, I'm all about breaking things down and then showing it how it works together. And that's the whole point of the math mission. It's like a math task. So you can see here it says use the cards to create a four digit number in the place value chart. Remember that the standard kept saying use base 10 blocks, use a place value chart. Only using each digit one time, then model your number by drawing place value blocks. So they can place their number in here, model with a drawing, decompose that number two different ways, and then compose it back into standard form. 
So Martha has decomposed a number and now she's writing it back into standard form, which really is composing those numbers back. So pretty cool there. For the math misconception mystery video, that was the print of, that was this right here. You can just click play and full screen it. But this is the problem that your students will solve first. I walk you through the whole the whole process in the videos. But first your students will solve the problem either independently or in a group. Then they will watch the video. So the video will instruct your students to solve it on their own or in a group, whatever one you choose. And then they will watch as four characters, which are just me dressed up in silly costumes, four characters will solve the same problem. Three of those characters will make a common mistake that students tend to make with this standard, with this skill, and only one student has the most reasonable answer. So students have to watch closely. After each character presents their problem, they can jot down their notes right here, and then they fill out their detective report, which is the second page. The most reasonable answer belongs to who, which character, and why. And then looking at the other three characters, what did they do that was correct? Finding the positive in the work that they produced, but also identifying their error and helping them to understand what they need to know for next time. So those are super fun, great for error analysis and showcasing mistakes in a fun way, right? If you have the gold plan, I'll show you what you have access to that aligns with this standard. So, um, we have the mini assessment, the answer key, this breaking down the best video that you're watching right now, it should be right there. It's one of the perks of being a gold member is that you get it ad free. Okay. And then you also have McCarthy math one five five. So let's take a look at the mini assessment. Here's a quick example. You can see the different types of items, putting it all together. Okay. And then you have your answer key and uh, McCarthy Math 155. This is the program that was aligned to the Common Core Standards. It's the program that I created before taking on the best. And when I was studying the new best standards, I was like, this is not gonna cut it. I'm not gonna joke and say that this is gonna fully support you. However, there are a lot of skills that trickle over. So if you have the gold package, you actually have access to a lot more practice videos. You just have to be careful and know your standards to know what aligns and what does not. So in fifth grade, really, we do not have a standard that aligns with the one that we're watching right now about composing and decomposing numbers with decimals. However, there is practice with reading and writing numbers with decimals. Later, we'll compare decimals and round decimals and we'll have some extra practice in there too. But again, you just have to be careful because things have changed with these new standards. So you can see that you have access to quite a bit with McCarthy Math 155. All right, I think that's it for going over this standard. Um, before we go, I wanna remind you that what you do every day with your life as a teacher, it really does matter. I know that this can be a really stressful profession, but I want you to know that to me, you do have value and your students are the why right? We have no idea how our influence is going to impact them, but we have to believe that what we bring to the table every day, it will make a difference. It will help to shape your students' minds and their action steps so that they can become the best versions of themselves later on. Thank you so much for all that you do for education, all that you do for your students, and remember to take time for yourself too. Everybody's got to rest and recharge and I hope you're taking care of yourself. So with that said, I cannot wait to see you on the next episode. Bye. Okay. So I know that I just said goodbye for now, but I'm going to ask you to do one more thing. Okay. If you enjoyed this episode, please consider sharing it with your teacher friends or other leaders in education. That's how I get to continue doing what I love to do, which of course is supporting you all to the best <laughs> of my ability. All right. For real now. Bye.